Okay, Linux from scratch. Well, the first thing they want us to do is check our packages, make sure they're up to date. And it looks like, looks like mine are. I went ahead and, uh, no, this one. So I went ahead and compiled the script that they gave me. And everything looks fine. So we'll just move on ahead. Building LFS in stages. LFS is designed to build to be built in one session. That is the instructions assume that the system will not be shut down during the process. That does not mean the system has to be done in one sitting. The issue is that certain pr procedures have to be reaccomplished after a reboot and re if resuming LFS at different points. These chapters are accomplished on the host system. When restarting, be careful of the following. Procedures done as the root after section 2.4 need to have LFS environment variables set for the root user. The mount ifs LFS partition must be mounted. These two chapters must be done as user LFS and um, a pseudo LFS needs to be done, blah, blah, blah. Okay, one, two, four. We got to watch out for doing root stuff. Creating a new partition. Like most other operating systems, LFS is usually installed on a dedicated partition. The recommended approach to build an LFS system is to use the available empty partition, or if you have enough unpartitioned space to create one. A minimal system requires a partition of around 10 gigabytes. That is enough to store all the source tar balls and packages. So we want a minimal system, we want at least 10. However, if the LFS system is intended to be in the primary Linux system, Linux file system is intended to be in the primary Linux system, which is my system. Um, additional software will probably be installed, uh, which will require additional space. A 30 gigabyte partition is a reasonable size to provide for growth. So we want 30 if we're doing it on the primary Linux system. Oops. Um, although this is technically the primary Linux system, I'm making this so I can ship it out like a distribution. So I guess we don't need 30. I'll do 30 just in case. Uh, the LFS system itself will not take up this much room. A larger proportion of this requirement is to provide sufficient free temporary storage as well as for adding additional compatibilities after LFS is complete. Additionally, compiling packages can require a lot of disk space which will be reclaimed after the package is installed. Because there is not always enough random access memory available for computation processes, it is a good idea to use a small disk partition as a swap space. This is used by the kernel to store seldom used data and leave more memory available for active processes. The swap partition for an LFS system can be the same as the one used by the host system. I could use my host, uh, my swap partition, in which case it is not necessary to create one. I'm, I think I'll do this. Start a disk partitioning program. I'll use fdisk because I'm used to it. With the command line option, naming the hard disk on which the partition will be created. Mm -hmm. Create a Linux native partition and a swap partition if needed. Please refer to cfdisk or fdisks. I don't need to create a swap partition. I'm running Arch Linux. By the way, I already have a swap partition. Remember the designation of the new partition. Remember the designation of the new partition. This book will refer to this as the LFS partition. Remember the designation of the new partition. 
Also remember the designation of the swap partition. Uh, these names will be needed later. Okay. Pseudo. So, swap partition of four gigs. Main partition. Four six five. Um, SDB. I'll do it on my on my one terabyte partition, which I use to store video games, Steam games. So, create a new Linux file partition. Linux system. A release 30 in a swap. Note, for experienced users, other partitioning schemes are possible. The new LFS can, can be on a software RAID array or an LVM logical volume. However, some of these options require init RAM FS, which is an advanced topic. These partitioning methodologies are not recommended for the first time LFS users. Now, I messed with init RAM FS when I was trying to install uh, a 64 bit version of Ubuntu on a 32 bit <laughs> architecture. Yeah, that was funny. Remember the designation of the new partition? Yep. Request for advanced system partitioning, often posted on the LFS mailing. Yep. Uh, root LFS partition. Not to be confused with the slash root directory of 20 gigabytes is a good compromise for most system. Provides enough space to build all this. Uh, might as well just do 20 since it's telling me to do 20. So we'll do new primary one first sector 20 gigabytes. I'll do 30. It's a one terabyte hard drive. It's not like I'm gonna use all of it. Right. Clear. Clear. Else be okay. STB. STB one. B zero. Mhm. Mm this is my STB, by the way. Oh no, that's my home. STB. This is my STB, by the way. So now it's split up into two. Should be. So that's right here it is. Just like how my SDA is split up into three partitions. This is boot. The uh, system partition, SDA2. Home partition, SDA3. Wait, why is this this? Oh. Mm. Oh, it's this, yes. I thought that was connected to SDA3 for a second. I was like, what? Okay, can use my own swap partition. Most distributions automatically create a swap partition. Generally, the recommended size of a swap partition is about twice the amount of physical RAM. However, this is rarely needed. If disk space is limited, hold the swap partition to two gigabytes and monitor the amount of disk swapping. If you want to use the hibernation feature, suspend to disk of Linux, it writes out the contents of RAM to the swap partition before turning off the machine. In this case, the size of the swap partition should be at least as large as the system's installed RAM. So basically, uh, the hibernation feature of Linux uh, is different from sleep, where sleep stores stuff in RAM, uh, the hibernation will store stuff on the disk, suspend to disk, as it says, and it uses the swap partition. And basically the swap partition is just a, a partition on your hard disk or SSD or whatever. And it'll act as RAM, but it's not RAM. Swapping is never good. 
see, I didn't know this. I I, I did hibernation um, before. It's not good practice. Um, I'm not sure. sure. There must be some good use for it, but it's better not to use it. Uh, for mechanical hard drives, you can generally tell if a system is swapping by just listening to the disk activity and observing how the system reacts to commands. This is like clicking in your hard disk. For an SSD driver, you will not be able to hear swapping because it's not a hard disk. It's uh, electric, electromagnetic. I mean, it uses magnets, whatever. SSD is stuff. Um, swapping, but you can tell how much swapping space is used by the top or free programs. Use the SSD drive for a swap partition. Uh, the use of SSD drives for a swap partition should be avoided if possible. The first reaction of swapping uh, should be to check for an unreasonable command, such as trying to edit a five gigabyte file. If swapping becomes a normal occurrence, the best solution is to purchase more RAM for your system. That's a good solution. Grow BIOS partition. Ooh, we need a BIOS partition. That's cool. If the boot disk has been partitioned with a GUID partition table, then a small, typically one megabyte partition must be created if it does not already exist. This partition is not formatted but must be available for Grub to use during installation of the bootloader. This partition is normally uh, will be normally labeled as the BIOS boot. EFO2. So I need to create a Grub partition. this partition another partition right it'd be extended plus two megabytes it said type you have two, right? EFO2. EF. Hmm? BIOS boot. It's not EFI. Wait, it is, right? Let's look for BIOS boot, anyways. Yeah, EFI. If using FDisk or have a code of EFO2 and using this labeled BIOS boot, just to make sure that I'm not blind. BIOS boot partition FDisk. EFO2. Mm -hmm. Huh. 
Is it because this partition is not GPT? And that is a DOS file? Oops. my main EFI system EFI system Linux file system. Oh, I forgot to change that. I wanted to change it to a Linux file system, which is, um, 82. No, let's swap. because I'm running DOS. This is GPT, yeah. It's because I have a DOS disk label. Um, do I reformat? Do I move my games and reformat it? I don't know, we'll see. Well, I think that's enough for part one of today. Yeah, um, um, well, we'll continue next time. I'll get the partition done and we'll move on from the partitioning step. I'll see you guys later.